welcome folks. The holidays are upon us and we're faced with kind of a unique challenge this year. We're doing a, a lot of maybe for the first time your own Thanksgiving at home with your own immediate family as, as we, we try to come to grips with the uh, pandemic that we're currently in. And so we thought we'd put together a uh, video on how to carve a turkey, which can be a little bit of a daunting task for some folks. But first, let's just talk about the bird in general. Um, Nowadays, when you go to the grocery store, uh, you need to plan a little bit ahead when you get a turkey, especially if you're getting a frozen turkey. You gotta realize this, this turkey was originally 12 pounds, and so you had a 12 pound frozen solid mass. And so if you go on Wednesday right before Thanksgiving or on Christmas Eve right before Christmas to get it, you're probably not gonna have enough time for the, uh, the turkey to completely thaw. There's a couple ways you can do that. If you plan far enough ahead, you can put the turkey in your refrigerator, frozen turkey in your refrigerator, make sure you have something underneath of it, like put it in a cake pan or something along those lines to catch the, uh, uh, the water and the juice that comes off of there. Put it in your refrigerator for a week or so and just let it kind of naturally thaw out that way. Or if you want to move things a little bit quicker, you can use leave it in its packaging again leave it leave it in its always leave it in its packaging until you're ready to cook but leave it in its packaging put in a sink of cold water and change that cold water every so every few hours so that we make sure that we get the uh, the turkey thawed um, that's the big thing that we run into is folks that, that wait till the last second and try to thaw a turkey and then and when I was working retail, people said, well, I'll put it in the microwave. There's not microwaves big enough for these guys, okay? So thawing your turkey. The next thing I think we should talk about is food safety, all right? In the last 30 plus years, the foods industry and the meats industry, the poultry industries as a whole, have done a tremendous job of working on ways to make our food supply more safe. However, we're fighting an invisible enemy, and so accidents do happen and things do slip through the cracks. If your kitchen is anything like the kitchen I've seen at my in-laws or my parents' house on Thanksgiving morning or Christmas morning when we're getting ready for uh, dinner, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of people coming and going. And the main thing I want you to think about when you're trying to keep your family safe is making sure that hot foods and cooked foods stay away from uncooked foods. And we don't want that cross-contamination to occur as, uh, as well especially with turkeys all right we i know we're thawing turkeys and we're we're putting it through the uh through the uh, counter and putting it in the oven and so on and so forth if you see any of that juice on there make sure you clean it up thoroughly uh, it's really easy to have you know have bleach wipes that are going to kill the uh, the bacteria as well on there the other thing when it comes to food safety is the big thing that I see everybody do, including my family, is put stuffing into the turkey, all right? Now think about this for a second, folks. We know that if we properly cook things that we can kill any bacteria that's in there. However, if you look at this guy, he was 12 pounds before he was cooked. We put stuffing in there. We only monitored the temperature of the, of the deepest part of the breast. And so we had this, if you got stuffing in here, that is inside this body cavity. We're going to naturally assume that there are bacteria in here that can be harmful to our health. We only made sure that this part got cooked. We didn't make sure that this part down here got cooked. So if you want to do the stuffing, make sure you do the stuffing towards the end of the cooking of the bird, as well as maybe pre-cook the stuffing or go through another cook cycle there so that your stuffing is safe as well. That's the big thing. The third thing I want to talk about is cooking, all right? Uh, when we cook the turkey, it seems fairly easy to Get your oven to whatever temperature the instructions tell you to. Put the turkey in there and just let it bake until the pop-up timer comes up, all right? The challenge with the pop-up timers is sometimes they don't work. Sometimes when they do work, it could be a little bit of, of overcooking. So we don't want to overcook our bird. So we want to cook that, that bird to roughly around 170 or so, the deepest part of the uh, breast. And the reason why I say 170 is you can pull it out and let it, the residual heat carry it up to that 180 that, that some companies uh, uh, suggest. 
some will also tell you that 180 is too high as well. So it's just kind of a personal preference type thing there as well. So baking a, a uh, turkey is, is a fairly easy thing to do. We can do the basting and so on. Some folks will, will brine a turkey ahead of time, go online and find a recipe for brining. And basically that is a, is a fancy way of saying marinating or we're allowing, we're putting extra moisture inside that turkey to help protect from overcooking as well. Well, the new thing that we have is frying turkeys, and I've had some frying tur fried turkeys before. They're really good, but we need to be extremely careful when we're frying turkeys. It takes a little bit of preparation. For example, put your bird in first, then put your oil in there so you know that how much oil needs to be in there when the bird is present. Just don't fill the the uh, pot full of oil and then you put your bird in there and you get the, the oil coming down the sides, you get a fire, you get to meet the fire department on Thanksgiving or Christmas Day. So we don't want to do that. The other mistake I see folks uh, making is they don't either thoroughly defrost or thaw the turkey or they don't wipe the turkey down to make sure it's the surface is dry. Moisture and hot oil really don't like each other and they start to spark, especially if you're one of those that's lowering in it and like this, and all of a sudden it starts sparking, hits your skin, and you panic and drop it in there, and then we got that splash in the fire. So please be careful. There's always ways to go online to make sure that uh, you're, you're doing the fried turkey correctly, all right? Um, so this is a whole turkey. Let's get down to carving this thing. And chances are, if this is the first time you've done this, uh, the first time you're hosting your own holiday dinner, you're going to have a little bit of an audience, all right? Uh, in my family, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, newness of it's worn off. I'm usually, since I'm the meat cutter in the family, I'm the guy that gets to do this. And so what we're going to kind of show you is some various ways of carving your bird so you can get the most out of it, all right? For example, we have a whole bird. We have the wings here. And sometimes it's really easy just to pull the wing apart. Now this wing tip, okay, this wing tip, there is zero meat on there. So it is, there's nothing to save with that. We just, they leave it on there. And then you get what we, the traditional wing. So if this was chicken, we're talking about your Chicken wings, so this is a turkey, all right? So you do have the two halves there. You got the flat half and the drumette half. You basically see what I'm doing there. If you cook it properly, you can do some of this just by, by your hands, all right? Let's scoot this guy back a little bit. And so you got your, your turkeys there. And you can do a few things with these guys. Uh, you can leave them whole as is. You can pull the meat off of them if you want. I'll show you how to do that on this back one. Let me go ahead and get the one closest to me off of here. Okay, we'll put the wing tip over there. And really all I'm doing, folks, is if you can see, taking that wing off, I'm just coming up here right into that joint there and just popping that joint off like so, all right? And like I said, a, a nicely slow cooked turkey, you see how I just did that with my fingers. No sense of getting the knife out or anything like that. And again, just pulling those two pieces apart, all right? So nothing real challenging about that. You can come in here and essentially just take the, the meat off with your fingers. You're left with the bone. Same thing with the flat. Now the flat has two bones in there, so we need to be cognizant of that as well. If you want to take the skin off, you may or may not like the skin on there, you can take the skin off like so. You're always going to get some of the, uh, the meat that's going to stick to the skin. Again, you take that off of your fingers. You see I'm wearing not only latex gloves, but I got cotton gloves underneath here because this, you know, you're also dealing with a hot turkey, so you don't want to burn yourself. Uh, again, there's bone number one on the wing. Here's bone number two. You essentially kind of pull that off as well. We've got our wings removed. And the next thing we could do before we dig into the breast, we could take the uh, drumsticks and the thighs off as well. You may need a knife to get in here. So we got a big knife. Make sure you got a sharp knife, all right, folks. Uh, a lot of times our kitchen knives are not very sharp. We need to make sure that we sharpen those. You know, the old adage, what's going to cut you more, a sharp knife or a dull knife? Dull knife's gonna more likely going to cut you because you put more force on it. But sharp knives do a lot more damage, so let's be careful there. So I see just kind of cut through the skin there. And again, just like we did with the wings, 
bring my thumb down here. I may have to kind of use my knife to guide it through there. And come just kind of pulling the drumstick off of the thigh. Okay. When I get down to where I can see that joint is broken, all right, if I have to, I can bring my knife in between that joint, just like so. And you can do a couple things. You can leave the drumstick whole like this. I'll pull this one off over here on the other side closest to me again. Okay. Or I'll show you with this one closest to me as I'm trying to get it off. You can take the meat off of it again, kind of take the skin off. Now the, the issue you, we have with the drumstick, and we'll kind of show you here as we come across them, there's tendons inside here. All right, and you can kind of see this one right here. Got a tendon there. That's not gonna be very good for your guests to, to eat on. And so if you're doing the drumstick, make sure that you kind of palpate with your fingers to get those tendons out of there, all right? Those tendons out of there. So we don't get that in our, serve that to our guests. Now, this is a smaller bird, so smaller birds tend to have a little smaller tendons you may not be able to catch, which is not that big of a deal, but you see those bigger tendons are. If you get a bigger bird, all right, if you get a bigger bird, then you're talking about those tendons uh, being a little bit bigger inside there. So. so you got two ways to do your drumstick. Either a whole drumstick like we have right here or pull the meat off of it. The next thing to think about is taking the thigh off of here. And again, just like we did with the drumstick, you can see how easily that thigh came off. A little bit of the tail came off with it as well. And again, if we want it to be boneless, you can kind of shred that. You see, really all I'm doing is taking the meat off with my fingers, you know, and again, kind of, kind of breaking it up with my fingers there. All right, so there's the bone for that one. Put this little drumstick bone over here as well on the skin. The tail goes over there. And then on the other side, doing the same thing and coming back here and removing that. Now. In a properly cooked turkey, you see how everything's just kind of falling off the bone. That's kind of what we want. That's what we want there on, uh, on our Thanksgiving and Christmas turkeys is the, uh, for it to fall off the bone. All right. Again, you can see we got our two drumsticks and our two uh, thigh bones as well as our drumstick bone as well. It's come off of there. We have two pieces left. We have the breast meat, which we're gonna to wait till the last to cut up. We also have, you notice, the back. And there's a lot of meat on the back. You can see what I'm doing is just kind of moving my fingers along there to take some of that meat off of there. Now, there are some folks that will save the back meat and use that in soup stock or something along those lines, or they serve it to their guests. There's really nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just one of those things that people often forget about when carving a turkey is the meat that's on the back of the, uh, of the bird as well. Um, so like you see, I'm just kind of going in here and removing some of it with my fingers, all right? The last and arguably some of the, uh, the, the best part of the bird is the breast. In fact, uh, I would even encourage you if you have a small gathering, if you're not a big fan of dark meat, uh, which is the, the back of the leg, the thigh, and the wings, you can just buy an app, uh, just a, a whole turkey breast and, and cook that as well. Uh, my family, I have to be honest with you, we're not uh, huge fans of the dark meat, so at Thanksgiving, and Christmas, we're gonna cook just a turkey breast as well. These are uh, two great big muscles. They're, they're Latin are the big, the, is the uh, deep pectoral muscles, what we call them. In the middle, there's a bone. You kind of see my finger pushing really hard there. That bone's called the keel bone, all right? And the way I like to do this, and really there's no right or wrong way, is to get my knife, and I can feel where the keel bone is, and come right beside that keel bone and start to make my cut, all right? And so, again, I can reach in here and take my thumb all the way down to the bone and slowly start to take the breast meat off. And I like to try to get the breast meat in one big piece, okay? 
I'm going to turn it this way so I can work on it a little bit easier here. So you can see we've got a lot of the meat off of there. We can still come in here with our fingers and kind of remove the rest of the breast meat along the bone as well. Now, this is one of those things that uh, folks kind of have a challenge with because they're trying to do this when it's hot and so you can use your, your tongs to do that and to help your kind of steady the bird. Um, again, this bird is not as hot as it was if it came out of the oven like at your house, but uh, these cotton gloves that you can see underneath my, my latex gloves are fairly easy to find. And you put latex gloves over the top of them and it kind of protects them from staining, gives your hands a little bit of protection from the heat as well. And then you can see that's what one side of the breast looks like when we take it off. And then we just basically repeat on the other side. Now this is where we need to be careful, all right, because now we're dealing with something that's a little wobbly, and so we don't want to cut ourselves, and so we need to be careful of where our fingers are and where the knife is. And so if you're not used to using a knife of this size, it's nothing wrong with using a smaller knife if you need to, all right. And make, just make sure that we don't hurt ourselves and have to go to the emergency room or anything like that. And again, using kind of the same technique, get a properly cooked bird, these guys should kind of roll off of here. Like so. Again, take some of the other, use our fingers, get some of this else off the bone as well. Okay, again, there's some up in here. All right, get that skin that's on my fingers off. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of down here at the front of the keel. Now there's something special at the front of this keel. I'm going to wait till the very end to conclude things with that you can have fun with as well. Okay, I'm going to try to get it to where you can see him. But now we can take our skin off, gently pull the skin off of the, uh, the bird like so. And then you can see how the muscle fibers are running kind of down at an angle like that. And if you want to, you can actually come in here with your knife and kind of cut those across the grain because meat and muscle is a lot like wood. It has a grain to it. And cut those across the grain, shorten up those muscle fibers, make this a little bit more tender as well. So you do things like that. Now, at this point, if it's like any other Thanksgiving I've been to, you've got people reaching in, wanting to do, as we call, quality assurance. They're gonna make sure everything's cooked properly, and you're down here trying to cut, all right? So be careful of those fingers grabbing in as you're cutting things up. And so you can kind of see, we can repeat it on the other side. This is kind of a neat little muscle scene. I just pulled it out, okay? If you're familiar with buying chicken, now we can buy chicken tenderloins. This is the turkey tenderloin, all right? So it just kind of sits right here in that breast, so you can do that as well. And I told you I was going to wait till this very last for this piece that you can have fun with, all right? Let me see if I can get this to where you can see it a little bit easier on the anatomy of the bird, all right? Right at the front of the bird, you see this bone right here, all right? This is where we can have fun. If you come in right behind it, should be able to come right behind that guy. You have, arguably, the fun thing for kids at a holiday meal is the wishbone. And we all know the tradition of two people grabbing it, making a wish, and they break the bone in half, and whoever has the bigger side gets their grant wish granted. You can come in here again and, and as things cool down and you can pick more meat off of this if you want to. Uh, I've also seen folks will take this and uh, boil it down for soup stock or something along those lines as well. But you can see really not real very difficult to actually carve your own turkey. We tried to go at a uh, slow pace so you could see it. You can see even as you get the breast off, some of that more meat that's on the back is starting to come off as, uh, as well. And so I really hope that uh, you find the, the video useful and that uh, you're not too intimidated this year at your holiday meal, whether it be Christmas or Thanksgiving, of carving that turkey. Have fun, enjoy, and happy holidays. Mm -hmm.